Hello and good morning. Holly Shields here live from Calgary Studio in Sydney and you're watching The Early Trade. A show where we share with you a glimpse of the Australian share market opening trade landscape along with the global and domestic drivers triggering the market momentum. In our first segment of the day, we'll be looking at how the early morning trades panned out, taking cues from Wall Street action overnight. And then in the second segment, we'll be looking at prominent newsmakers grabbing the headlines during the early trade hours. Then last of all, we'll be looking at the market movements seen in crypto, crude oil, gold and metals indices. Well, the Australian shares opened lower today as the country battles a surge in the Delta variant of the coronavirus. The global stock markets inched lower yesterday amid concerns over inflation, despite Wall Street starting the week on a positive note. According to the latest ASX futures, the ASX 200 opened 25.90 points lower today after the benchmark index rose 0.2 percent to just over 7,425 in the previous session. Rebel Group, Ingham's Group, News Corp and Telco TPG Telecom are a few shares that are going ex-dividend today. The top gainers of the day on the ASX during the opening trade are Pilbara Minerals, Silver Lake Resources, Linus Rare Earths, West Gold Resources and Oz Minerals. While the bottom performing stocks are Unibail Redemco Westfield, Redbubble, Costa Group Holdings, New Farm, Afterpay as well. On Wall Street, the Dow Jones rose 0.75% and the S&P 500 climbed 0.25% as well. Meanwhile, the Nasdaq dropped 0.1%. Investors await the U.S. consumer inflation data due to be out today, which will give a broad picture of the economy's progress ahead of the Federal Reserve's meeting next week. Well, moving on to the next segment, let's have a look at the prominent ASX shares during the early trades. And the first company on our list today is Hotel Property Investments, a real estate firm in the pub sector of Australia, which has agreed to acquire Edwardus Lakes Hotel in North Melbourne for $28 million and is in talks to acquire another unclosed, undisclosed asset. The company will be targeting a $50 million placement to finance these deals. And the share price of the Hotel Property Investments company is trading flat during the opening trade at $3.54. Moving on now, mining services provider McMahon Holdings has finalized a $210 million mining contract with Caldeus Resources for the Warawuna Gold Project in WA. This project is expected to involve open cut mining activities in the Pilbara region through to 2026. And the share price of McMahon Holdings is trading higher during the opening trade at 23 cents. Next up, mineral exploration company Okapi Resources has acquired a 100% stake of the past producing Sunnyside Uranium Mine in Utah, the USA. The acquisition of this mine complements the company's existing Rattler Uranium project, which is continuous with NG Fuel's La Salle project. And the share price of a copy is trading lower during the opening trade at 68 cents. Meanwhile, Argenica Therapeutics, which develops novel neuroprotection therapeutics, has successfully scaled up the manufacturing of its lead candidate, ARG007, to good manufacturing practice guidelines through its manufacturing partner in Australia. The share price of Argenica Therapeutics is trading lower during the opening trade at 32 cents. And lastly, Kina Securities, a diversified financial services company, announced that it received the final determination by PNG Independent Consumer and C Competition Commission on its proposed acquisition of 89.91% stake in Westpac. Now it's assessing its complications of the ICCC's decision not to grant authorization for the acquisition. And the share price of Kina Securities is trading lower at 84 cents. Now let's have a look at the movement in the bond yields, crude, oil, gold and metal indices. Starting with the bond yields, US government yields fell as traders look ahead to the data today that is expected to show a continuing slowdown in the price of consumer 
as consumer price increases. Sorry. The yield on 10-year Treasury notes was down 1.8 basis points at 1.233%. And U.S. dollar climbed to a two-week peak against the basket of currencies on Monday. Boosted by expectations, the U.S. Federal Reserve could lower its asset purchases by the end of the year, despite a rise in coronavirus cases. The dollar index rose to 92.69, up 0.12% as well. And crude oil prices rose to six-week highs as U.S. output remains slow to return two weeks after Hurricane Ida slammed into the Gulf Coast and concerns of another storm could affect output in Texas this week. Brent crude settled up 0.81% at 73.51 US barrel, while West Texas Intermediate crude settled 1.05% at 70.45 US a barrel. Energy stocks like Woodside Petroleum were trading higher during the early trade, whereas Santos edged higher as well on Tuesday. And the next update we have is related to gold prices as it rose ahead of U.S. key economic data, including readings on inflation. Spot gold rose 0.3% to 1,792.05 U.S. an ounce at 1.40 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, while U.S. gold futures settled up 0.1% at just over $1,700. And ASX-listed gold stocks like Northern Star Resources were seen in the green during the early trade hours, while Newcrest Mining was also trading higher during the opening trades today. Now for a look at the iron ore prices, which fell amid steel products curb in China, causing the benchmark iron ore prices to fall 3.5 percent to 706 yuan per tonne at the close. Meanwhile, spot gold 62% iron ore was unchanged at 131.5 US per tonne last Friday. Well, that is all for now in the early morning trades. Holy Shields signing off.